Comrades, today, we're revealing something deep, Julius Malema's last wishes. Not just any will, but a document with strict instructions, a rare insight into Malema's distrust of the political establishment, his fierce protectiveness over his family, and the deep skepticism that drives his stance against political hypocrisy. This isn't just about his funeral plans, it's about betrayal, loyalty, and the battle against empty promises in the halls of South African power. Let's get straight to it. Malema didn't mince his words. In a recent speech, he laid down instructions for his funeral. And this speech hits hard because it's not just about him. It's about the broader state of South African politics, loyalty, and the betrayal of ordinary citizens by their leaders. So I said to my wife, and it's in my will, this thing, the program who's going to speak is there. Those who are not wanted is there. Even some relatives are there on the list. They must not come. <laughs> and I said to her, it's in the will. Imagine that. Malema isn't just laying out who he wants to speak at his funeral. He's actively barring certain people, including family members, from even attending. Why? Because, in his eyes, those people have betrayed him, or worse, represent the opportunistic, empty promises he's seen too often in politics. He doesn't want any false supporters showing up, preaching loyalty and solidarity only to forget his family the moment they walk away from the podium. This isn't a man who wants posthumous praise. He wants the truth, even if it's brutal. No politician must take a platform at my offender and say, we are going to support uh, uh, Malema's wife. That time they want to get into a bed. We are going to support Malema's wife. Amanda. They want to attack. <laughs> Useless. <laughs> hey, we are here to support, like we said in the funeral, wrong. There's no support. <laughs> hey, we are going to support Malema's children. Uh -uh, leave my children alone. No one. No one must take a platform and say, we're going to do one, two, three for Julius Malema. I don't want that. I don't want that. I'm waking now. I'm waking for my children. They will survive with the little I'm leaving them. Listen to that sharp disdain. Malema doesn't want any of these support promises at his funeral. Why? Because, as he says, they're lies. Politicians love to claim they'll look after a fallen comrade's family. But in Malema's eyes, this is nothing more than a ritual, a performance to win favor with the public. He's seen it all before. The fake promises, the sympathetic speeches, and then silence when it's time to act. And here's where it gets even more intense. Malema singles out his own allies, people who once promised to look after him and his family. He isn't shy about this, and he's clear that these leaders have shown their true colors time and again. The people who said they'll look after Magacha's children are still alive. Some are ministers, some are leaders. Mbalula is the secretary general. They went to Magacha's home with Sitez Galala and said, if you allow this guy to come, we are going to remove that tent. But they, they did a big tent there for them. And then after that, they left with their tents. They never returned back to that house. Yes, he's naming names, calling out the very people he knows won't have his family's back if he's gone. It's a scathing accusation, cutting right to the heart of South Africa's political hypocrisy. Think about it. How many times have we seen politicians making grand statements, promising change or help, only to fall silent once the cameras stop rolling? Malema isn't just talking about himself here. This is a warning to every South African. He's speaking to every family that's ever lost someone and watched as promises made to them were broken, as people they thought were allies faded into the background. For Malema, this isn't a matter of personal pride. It's a matter of principle. But here's the most explosive part. Malema's deep-seated distrust didn't come from nowhere. This speech is rooted in his experiences, his own journey as a leader who's seen what happens behind closed doors. He's watched allies turn their backs on those they promised to support and seen. Politicians use funerals and tributes as mere platforms for their own gain. Hey, we're going to support Malema's children. Uh -uh, leave my children alone. Why do you wait for me to die before you can support them? Why? Exactly. Malema questions the entire foundation of political loyalty in South Africa. If people truly wanted to help his family, he argues, they should be doing it while he's alive. This line exposes something powerful, the idea that support only comes when it's convenient, that politicians use others' struggles for their own benefit rather than helping when it's actually needed. This is not just Julius Malema being paranoid or overly dramatic. Look at the context here. Malema's career has been full of loyalty tests, betrayals, and hard lessons. He's seen people make promises in the name 
name of unity or solidarity, only to break them the moment it was no longer advantageous. From Winnie Mandela's funeral to other high-profile moments, Malema has used his platform to call out those who betray the very people they claim to support. Let's break it down even further. Malema's skepticism about the promises of political support goes beyond his personal experiences. It ties into his views on South African society as a whole. He sees political elites exploiting the struggles of ordinary people, manipulating the grief and hardship of families for political theater. And isn't that exactly what South Africa has witnessed, comrades? The ANC and DA joining forces in a coalition that's left people feeling betrayed, wondering who truly represents their interests. Malema's words resonate deeply because they aren't just about him. They're about a whole system of false promises and hollow words. Let's talk about the historical context here. This culture of empty promises is something Malema has fought against since his days with the ANC Youth League. He's always been outspoken about the need for true loyalty, for genuine support among comrades, not just empty gestures. His will is a testament to this belief. He's laying down boundaries, ensuring that those who would exploit his name are kept away. And I said to her, if you sit there, someone says, I'm going to support Malema, you don't stand up. You must know you sold me out. You might just stand up, hey, la, po, la, po, la, po, la, po, ima, 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 hey, oh. That must never be said. Don't say that, please. Because they take a platform here, yeah, say all manner of things for hands. When they leave, they even forgot what they said. Urman, that issue of Magatka, which one? Ah, but the speech. This isn't just a demand, it's an order. Malema wants his family to call out anyone who dares to make these fake promises at his funeral. For him, this is a non-negotiable stance. He's instructing his loved ones to push back to reject any and all false sympathies. Think about the kind of betrayal Malema has faced to make him put this in his will. We're talking about years of alliances and friendships that didn't hold up. And beyond his personal life, this message resonates with so many South Africans who've watched leaders fail to deliver on their promises. In a country where inequality is rampant, where many South Africans feel abandoned by their leaders, Malema's words speak to a broader frustration. His will exposes a deep anger with those who pretend to support the people, those who smile for the cameras but never follow through when it matters. Malema's last wishes are a statement of defiance, an unfiltered critique of the political world he's navigated for years. His will exposes not just a fear of being forgotten, but a demand for honesty, a cry for integrity in a system he believes is full of deceit. This isn't just a funeral arrangement. It's a call to action, a challenge for South Africans to demand real loyalty, real support, and to see through the masks of those who claim to represent them. So, comrades, what do you think? Is Malema right to draw this line? Is he justified in this mistrust? Or is there still room for genuine solidarity in South African politics? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and let's break down what's real and what's performance. This is a conversation we need to have because, as Malema shows us, the fight for true loyalty and integrity is far from over. Stay tuned for more on Top Malema, where we bring you the unapologetic, unfiltered truth. Hey, we're going to support Malema's children. Uh -uh, leave my children alone. Why do you wait for me to die?